Hey, Steve here, and welcome to the next episode of my Processing Subscriber Images videos. This image that we're working on today was sent to me from John Bayel, and he simply wanted to know um, how I would process this image and so he can compare it to his own efforts. So that's what I'll be doing in this video, and I'll be showing you the step-by-step -step process. But before we do, on that topic of this step-by-step -step process, thanks to everybody who left a comment on my previous video where I was asking whether you prefer the longer, full, detailed explanations or the shorter abridged summary video. The answers were pretty evenly divided, so I'm going to find a way to incorporate both into my videos going forwards. Uh, this one is going to be one of the longer uh, style. Now my overall strategy for this image is basically going to be to accentuate these rocks in the foreground and make them kind of pop a bit more than they are now. Um, I'm going to be reducing the impact of this brighter uh, patch of rock here, which is just on the edge of the uh, frame, because with that being sort of a bright feature down here, that's kind of drawing us out of the frame this way. It's grabbing a lot of our attention. Um, and then I'm going to be just accentuating the leading lines of the edges of the, uh, the sort of grass and shrubs around the side of this path here. And to be honest, the sky doesn't really need a lot of doing. So yeah, like I said, mostly in the foreground. So to get started, let's uh, let's look at adding a curves adjustment. And this one's just going to be a sort of simple contrast tweak there. Just being careful not to make the shadows too dark. Um, otherwise, we're going to have to start masking stuff out. Um, but that's a nice simple contrast pop there so I'll just invert the layer mask command or control I on the keyboard I've got a white brush selected I'm just going to go 100% opacity on the brush and I'm just going to brush this into the foreground just in the rocks here and to begin with that's a, a good sort of base contrast adjustment right with that in place the next thing that I probably want to do uh, and this is probably going to be the most uh, sort of time consuming and complicated part of the process I just want to accentuate the tops of these bushes here that are just catching the light coming from the Sun um, and also along the edge of the grass here to just accentuate the path and I can use a luminosity mask to brush um, a, an adjustment that's going to lighten those areas um, so I can use a luminosity mask to kind of make that happen without brightening the bits in front and behind. However, because those areas, even though there is contrast between the tips of the bushes and grass there and what's either side of them, they're not actually technically highlights because they're still quite dark in the image. So if I try to load a uh, highlights luminosity mask or selection, you can see there they're still really quite grey and using this to brush through isn't going to give us, uh, it's not going to give us much. So I'll just cancel this and I'll just show you how you can uh, just add a placeholder a temporary um, adjustment to help you create the luminosity mask that you want. Um, however, first let's just add the curves adjustment that's going to do the brightening. So let's leave it there and now let's hide it. Um, by inverting the layer mask, Command or Control I. All right, we'll come back to this once we've got our luminosity selection active. Now, the temporary adjustment, I'm going to use a levels uh, levels adjustment, and I'm just going to tweak the values here to increase the contrast whilst also brightening the bits that I want to to isolate and pick out with the selection. So probably something like this, where we can see here those tips of the grasses and uh, the bush there are standing out a lot more and are actually brighter compared to this and now with that contrasty temporary layer in place that's going to help us create a better luminosity mask so highlights one on the luminosity masking panel if you don't have the panel i'll put a link to some videos to show you how to get started with luminosity masking um, if you're new to it otherwise what I'm showing you here, if you are familiar with luminosity masking, should be uh, pretty straightforward if you're usually using the, the channels panel to create your masks. Um, so this is a highlights selection now. We can see there's a better isolation there. And we've got brighter grays that we can 
use uh, to brush through into the layer mask of our curves to adjustment. So click use mask. Let's get rid of this um, temporary layer now. I'm going to click into the layer mask of my curves to adjustment. I'm going to hide the marching ants as always because they get in the way and I don't like them. So command or control H. Now with a white brush, uh, let's go with 100% opacity. It might be a bit too strong, so I might have to undo this. But let's start brushing. So we're brushing through that luminosity mask. And it should only be being picked up in those lighter tips of the grass and the bushes over here on this side. Let's go through the middle a bit. Back around here. Maybe just this near edge. And also up here. Now you could do this completely freehand without going through the rigmarole of that luminosity selection. But that's not going to allow you to kind of brush and get through, you know, those, there's some really some very fine, intricate edges there. So what the luminosity selection does, it allows you to brush into these bits here without brushing over the lines into the mountains in the background. So let's have a quick look at the effect of that now. So that's pretty good. Um, so we have got a bit of that bleed over, you know, brushing over the edges just over here in the background. Um, I'm not going to take the time to correct that at the moment because that would probably be quite a lengthy process. Um, but it would just mean starting uh, with a more accurate luminosity selection, just building a more intricate mask there. But um, anyway, you get the idea. This is sort of to give you the general process. So with that done, just brushing some more in here. Uh, with that done, let's command or control D to deselect the active selection, get rid of that temporary layer. And we can actually start on with the, the dodging and burning um, type adjustments. So let's have a quick look at the before and after. So really quite subtle adjustments so far, just a nice little impact. Uh, what we're about to do now, uh, the general idea, and I've taught this before in previous videos, um, the general idea is to make these rocks here pop, what I want to do is darken the bits that I want to, well, first of all, darken the bits that I want to um, sort of fade away into the background, and then lighten the parts that I want to accentuate. But also within that, I'm going to be just generally darkening the darker edges and brightening the brighter edges um, to increase the contrast in the rock object. So let's walk through that. Adding a curves adjustment, let's start with darkening. So let's just drag the curve down. And then I also like to just bring the black point up a little bit just so the blacks don't get too crunchy. Um, so, okay, that's good. Let's invert the mask now. And now I will do this just with a a regular brush without a luminosity mask. Um, so let's start brushing. So I'm going to brush to reveal this darkening effect through in between this gap here, just down here. And I'm going to go and darken that corner um, because I want to try and keep all of the attention on this central rock here and even though I mean I'm guessing it's virtually impossible to take this shot without having these rocks kind of cut out um, over the edges of the frame uh, so even though that is happening I sort of still want to reduce the impact of it by uh, just by darkening those parts that are uh, bleeding out of the edge of the frame Okay, so that's that. Let's have a quick progress update. So there's that. Now let's use this same adjustment to just start brushing into some of the darker edges and sort of the nooks and crannies of these rocks. This near side can probably be made a bit darker. Just down here. Um, this is quite a sort of lengthy little process and I always struggle to think of things to say while I'm doing it because basically all I'm doing is just brushing into the dark parts and you can see what I'm doing. Um, 
So excuse me while I waffle as I just get this done. Okay, so here's before, here's after, before, after, before, after. Okay, so that's a nice effect there. Let's now do the opposite or the inverse, not the opposite. Um, maybe that's the same thing. Anyway, uh, and let's brighten the bright parts. So let's just brighten with that curve there, invert the mask, and now let's brighten not only the bright sides that are catching the light anyway, but the actual you know, parts of the rock that we want to draw more attention to. So technically that might mean going into the shadows, but this is our creative freedom, so we can do what we want really. So this brightening down here. Let's see, so let's look at the effect of both of these curves adjustments together. Here's before, and here's after. Before, after. Okay, so we can probably get a little bit more detailed with this, um, you know, by continuing on and just zooming in and doing it at a real micro level, just getting in you know, I'll show you what that might look like. So let's add another curves adjustment to darken. Let's invert the mask. And, you know, just really getting in there with a tiny brush and just making all of these darker edges darker and the brighter edges brighter. Um, so that would be how I would continue this process going forward for myself if I was going to be spending an hour or more processing the image. But a quick way to kind of get something similar would be to, well, you can either just increase the contrast with a curves adjustment, but that's, that's not going to quite give you the same result because you're not brushing it in exactly where you want it, um, even though we can just, you know, do that anyway and brush it in. So here's what that looks like you know, if we wanted to just brush that contrast into the foreground um, but let's get rid of that the other way that you could do it would be to use the high pass filter so uh, let's select all edit copy merged edit paste now filter other high pass uh, this is usually used for sharpening, but when you use it on a high value, you can actually use it to just generally increase the detail without giving it that kind of sharpening that would normally um, be done for just general sharpening purposes, you know, like with, with a really low value like this. So let's bung it up here. Let's go around 80 or 90. Click OK. Uh, blend mode for this layer now can either go to overlay or soft light. I think soft light's a bit more forgiving on those highlights, so let's use that. And now we can add a black layer mask to this layer. So Alt or Option and click on the Add Layer Mask button. Now again with that white brush, we can just brush this in where we want it in the foreground to make the detail in those rocks sort of stand out a little bit more. Um, so this is kind of like the quick and easy version of spending the time to go in and do this manually at a real micro level. Um, the other stuff, you know, with these previous ones here, you know, you can't really, there's no other way to sort of do that just with a general kind of filter or adjustment. You have to take the time to paint this in and out. Um, so, all right, let's see where we've come from the beginning. So just hide, whoops, hide all these layers. And is that going to fit? No. Okay, so here's the before and here's the after. Very, very subtle. Um, but as you can see, we're just starting to hone in on the rocks in the foreground here and bring the attention to those mostly. Uh, I might actually just reduce the opacity of this contrast layer. That's a bit too strong for my liking. Nice and subtle and easy does it. Uh, some other things that we could do here just to sort of help bring the uh, these areas out 
in the uh, you know these these grasses and bushes. Um, let's let's add a empty layer. Change the blend mode to overlay. I've got my brush tool selected. 30% opacity. Now if I hold Alt or Option on the keyboard, then the cursor turns to the eyedropper tool and then I can basically uh, just sample a color from the image. So I'll sample a light orange color from the leaves there. And okay, we might need a luminosity selection for this. So I think this is going to be okay. Yeah, so let's do it with the highlights one selected or the highlights one selection active. Command or Control H. And I'm just going to brush into the uh, into the leaves there. I'm not sure if you can quite see, but it's just adding a bit more color and a bit more richness to the bushes. In fact, I might actually brighten this color here so it also adds a bit of brightness as well. And this will probably work quite nicely over here and through the grass, just adding a bit of light and warmth to the grass as well. You yeah, can see there that's lighting the grasses up nicely before and after. And we can also use it to accentuate the sunlight on these rocks in the foreground here. So this color should work quite nicely. So I'm just going to brush through here just to add a bit of color to these rocks as if the sun, you know, as if they were catching the color from the sun even more than they are naturally. So that might be a little too strong in the foreground. So let me just oops, uh, undo, add a layer mask. Let's grab a black brush and I'm just going to subtly remove this effect from the foreground a little bit. So there's before, there's after. Okay, next I think we might just want to brighten the image up just generally. Um, so let's just try a curves adjustment and just drag the curve up a bit just to give the image a bit of brightness there. Um, maybe we can drop the shadows a little bit. Maybe not. That's a bit too bright. So let's just get rid of that point and just, just not brighten it quite so much. Maybe like this. And actually, let's invert the mask. And then with a white brush, let's just brush this into the foreground just through here. And I'll go to 100% opacity on the brush just to get that done quickly. Okay, so just brightening the foreground there. Now with that done, let's add one more darkening layer. So just tweaking the curves adjustment there to darken the image, invert the mask. And I think what I want to do now is just kind of carve the rocks out a bit more. So darkening the path up here. So the path could be considered a leading line, but I'm darkening it anyway because we've got the lines coming from the grass and they kind of lead us up that way anyway. So I don't think we're losing much from darkening the stones and the gravel. So I just want to really get these edges here. So kind of like a manual vignette type situation where you know, I'm just darkening the edges to bring attention to the middle, but I'm not doing it via a, a preset or a slider. You know, I'm just brushing the darkness in exactly where I want it. Okay, that's that. That looks pretty good. Um, now, I can't remember if I mentioned at the start, but I wanted to just desaturate this orange block over here that's catching the color from the sun, just because it's dragging a bit of our attention away and out of the frame because it's kind of cut off there. Uh, so we can probably do that just with the hue saturation layer. Let's see if we desaturate a bit, how far do we need to go? Okay, let's leave it there. We can leave a bit of color in there. We don't have to completely desaturate it. We're just trying to reduce its impact on our kind of how we 
you know, how we how much we notice it basically. Um, okay, so that's not quite the right color now. Let me see. So I think I might need to put a bit of green into that area now. So let's just add a curves adjustment. Add a touch of green. Now invert the mask and now brush that greenness in there just to kind of make it match the color of the rock around it a little bit more. So let's look at the before and after. So there's before, there's after. So it just reduces the impact of that, that bright spot right on the edge of the frame. I'm not sure if maybe, well, let's just see if we can, what happens if I do the same thing over here? Yeah, I can live with that. So we're just leaving the middle bit with the uh, the sunlight kind of really shining off of it. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Again, let's do a before and after on the whole image. I'm probably just going to have to group these adjustments. So just click on the top one, click the bottom, Command or Control G. Okay, here's before is after so you might be thinking this is a lot of adjustments for a relatively small effect but you know subtlety is the key when you're adding adjustments to your images um, you know and it's much you know, it's my preferred way to uh, to add more smaller adjustments than fewer big adjustments uh, so we're kind of almost there we could probably you know, move on to just generally sharpening the image. Um, oh, actually, there's one more thing I wanted to do. Let's just fix up the fact that the sun is just a tiny bit overexposed, and we can do that using the sun blur technique. So, I've got a new layer, got my brush selected. I'm going to hold Alt or Option on the keyboard and just sample a really light yellow color from close to the blown out part of the sky. I'm going to use a brush opacity of 30% and I'm going to hit the brush once there, right on the middle of the sun. I'm going to kind of double the size, click again. Now that might be enough. Let's just do another dab for good measure with a bigger brush. Did that work? I don't know if that... I don't think the brush clicked. Hang on. There we go. Um, so probably somewhere between, let's just reduce the opacity. Okay, I think that works pretty nicely. So it just softens up that harshness of the white part of the sun that's being overexposed. You can sort of blend that in as subtly as you want, you know, because we've done three brush strokes on 30% opacity, there's quite a bit of leeway there to kind of tone the opacity of this layer back quite a bit and you still get the benefit of filling in that color around this uh, around the sun I think about 50% works nicely okay I'm happy with that uh, before we finish this completely I always like just for good measure to try an autumn effect uh, so let's just use the panel here to uh, to do that quickly rather than using the manual steps and hey presto, let's invert the mask to show this effect. Okay, that's quite strong. So let's pull it back to quite a low opacity and see what that gives us. All right. Well, that's a nice softening effect. It adds a bit of contrast, but in a nice soft way. Um, and yeah, maybe that'd be that would be the finishing touch that this image really needs. Thanks again for watching, and I will talk to you soon.